How's it going, guys? Past level question, genetics for step one. If you're studying for TCK, obviously important in general internal medicine. 34-year-old man, 34-year-old man, what the fuck am I saying? 34-year-old woman, six-month history of progressively worsening blood pressure. Blood pressure today is 165. MR angiogram of the renal artery shows no abnormality, so we know it's not fire muscular dysplasia. Renal ultrasound shows multiple regular enlargements bilaterally. Genotyping is performed. Mutation of polycystin is detected. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this refers to autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, which presents 30s to 40s, okay? And polycystin shows up on one of the NBME exams for step one. They give you a very similar vignette and the answer is just polycystin, not dramatic. And I can tell you one of the most important points, especially if you're studying for 2CK, is they want you to know that serial blood pressure checks are the most important for follow-up for the patient because you get cystic enlargements and pinching on the renal microvasculature causing a surge of RAS. That's more important than MR angiogram circle of Willis screening. You can get Berry slash saccular aneurysms, but that's not the standard screening test. Only if there's family history of that, they want serial blood pressure checks as the correct answer. So this is ADPKD presents thirties, forties, ARPKD in contrast is going to be pediatrics with Hepatic fibrosis associated with that as well. So ADPKD, chromosomes 4 and 6, polycystin, ARPKD, chromosome 6, fibrocystin. So what's the which condition has the same inheritance pattern? Choice A, cystic fibrosis, wrong fucking answer, autosomal recessive. CFTR gene codes for a uh, chloride channel normally found on the cell surface. And in cystic fibrosis, it's misfolded, so it'll be sequestered in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Patients will have chronic pulmonary infections. They'll give you a kid with failure to thrive due to exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, leading to fat soluble vitamin malabsorption, obviously meconium ileus at birth. There can be CBABD, congenital bilateral absence of the vas deferens, leading to infertility absence sperm in a sample. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, G6P deficiency, wrong fucking answer. It's excellent recessive. So I'd say the three highest yield conditions for you similarly that are XR are going to be G6P deficiency, combined hemophilias A and B as the second, and then the third, Duchenne slash Becker. Okay, those are exceedingly high yield for X-linked recessive conditions in USMLE. G6PD is just an enzyme that's required for the production of NADPH, a reducing agent that protects, that protects RBC membranes from oxidative damage. So you can get hemolysis due to viral infection or a drug classically, dapsone primaquin, Give an eight-year-old with some scleral ectoris following viral infection. You can get degmocytes, which are bite cells. You can get Heinz bodies, which are uh, partially uh, oxidized hemoglobin. Choice B, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, hereditary serocytosis, correct answer. So this is exceedingly easy for some of you, but we're talking about high yield stuff here, not just obscure minutiae. So this is going to be a heterozygous mutation, anchor in spectrum band proteins. And I explicate heterozygous because that's what the NBME will do. They'll say homozygous, heterozygous, for anchor and spectrum is heterozygous because it's AD. So cytoskeletal slash cell membrane protein. And patients are going to have a positive osmotic fragility test, eosin 5 malamide. They're going to, it's a normal cytic, normal chromic anemia. NBME assesses that. And they want you to know that uh, this will require splenectomy and cholecystectomy in a large number of patients. So they'll give you a five-year-old girl who has anemia, and they'll tell you her dad has history of splenectomy and cholecystectomy. Okay, increased RBC turnover, the spherocytes, uh, that's going to lead to pigment stone cholelithiasis. Okay, so the spleen is churning over those RBCs. Also, you can get an increased MCHC, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. Choice C, correct answer. Choice D, sickle cell anemia, wrong fucking answer, ozone or recessive. Okay, so this is going to be a glutamic acid availing substitution beta chain. And so uh, sickle cell, they want you to know that the sickling crises causing pain can be in the hands, dactylitis, what's referred to, hands slash feet, can be in the abdomen and in the chest. There's a difficult NBME question where they just give you an immigrant and they just say there's severe abdo pain you have to eliminate to get there. And you're like, shit, I didn't know that. Uh, sickling crises could cause isolated abdominal pain. Sounds a little bit weird. So there's other things like salmonella, osteomyelitis you can get in sickle cell anemia, resistance to malaria. Wrong fucking answer. 
Should I see Sturge Weber, spelled Sturge Weber? One of the neurocutaneous disorders, the phacomatosis, wrong fucking answer, okay? This is somatic mosaic. Talk about phacomatosis. That's going to be von Hippel-Lindau, NF1, NF2, sclerosis. Those four are autosomal dominant, but Sturge Weber, somatic mosaic, holy shit. So it's going to be the port wine stain birthmark, usually in the trigeminal distribution, the face. And it can present as violaceous papules in a temporal distribution. It doesn't have to be the overt port wine stain birthmark. Uh, this can present with seizure, glaucoma. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal with two macro content on my subscription. Appreciate your time. That's it.